You know when you start doing something and it just sort of spirals out of control? Well, I actually gained over 25 million strength XP while putting this guide together. If you've ever killed Vindicta before, you know that she has this attack where purple smoke sort of shoots across the arena and it hits you for a bunch of magic damage. This attack usually can be avoided just by stepping out of the way, or if you're really a gamer, you can kind of tank it. But one thing people don't often do is skip the mechanic. Basically, if you deal 100k damage in 20 seconds or so, it'll skip over that first fire attack. And then if you do another 100k damage in the next 15 seconds or so, you'll actually be able to skip all of the fire mechanics. And that's exactly what we are going to do in this guide. I've seen a few methods pop up that try to do this, but every single one suffers from the same issue. Just like I went over in my Hellware video, your first attack on the boss happens at slightly different times depending on when your character register is getting attacked. When you're killing the boss in 36 seconds or less, any abilities that have a 60 second cooldown will shift in your action bar and break it, leading to your death. In the Hellware video, we got around this by staggering the action bar so every time it shifted, a new ability combo would still give you a fast kill. This doesn't work at Vindicta because the purple smoke will spawn and kill you. Bars that use Reflect to survive the smoke are a little bit too slow. Instead, I've worked out some rotations that eliminate Chaos Roar entirely and use Greater Flurry to reduce the cooldown of Berserk every single kill. By doing this, we can consistently kill Vindicta every 36 seconds, giving us 60 kills per hour every single hour. This method will require a Zuck Cape for overpower. I have both the 99 strength and the 99 hit points perks on my cape. I'll release my Zuck method next for those of you who are still struggling to get that cape. We're going to use the Vestments of Havoc Robe set because it boosts the duration of Berserk and gives really nice adrenaline restoration effects. For our weapon, we're going to use an Abyssal Scourge, which is relatively cheap and does great damage here. In the offhand, we have a tier 95 Dark Sliver of Leng, which is more expensive, but you can replace it with a tier 92 or a 90 instead. In our glove slot, we used Enhanced Gloves of Passage instead of Cinder Banes because the Vindicta cannot be poisoned. After using Havoc, the gloves boost the damage of your next ability, and they temporarily increase bleed damage. We'll further upgrade them with the Enchantment of Agony so they do even more damage. Our amulet is an essence of finality. The EOF gives accuracy and healing perks that we need. I tested an amulet of zealots, but I didn't have enough accuracy on the second phase to use it. It may work with a tier 95 main hand, but your kill times would probably be too inconsistent or fast. Our ring is at Champion's Ring, we're not going to use the Equilibrium Aura with every setup, so we can crit, which makes this ring even more useful. I have a Rune Pouch in my ammo slot just for the prayer bonus, and then a Book of Full in my pocket slot. We won't activate the book with every single setup, as it will make us do too much damage, but we'll use it for a few of the setups. I perked my Scourge with Eruptive 4 Precise 3. This is a new ability combo worth looking into. I'm using it primarily because it combos really well on the Scourge for a lot of different use cases. The combination is 6 Precise and 3 Time Worn Components at level 137 Invention. It's a 1 in 83 odds, which isn't too bad, considering it's like pretty cheap to go for. My offhand is Aftershock 4 Ruthless 1, but just Aftershock 4 is fine. The armor perks are Impatient 4, Crackling 4, and Biting 4 Crystal Shield 1. You can put Crystal Shield 1 with Crackling 4 using 7 Vintage and 2 Faceted Components at level 86 Invention. It's about a 1 in 9 odds for that, so a little bit better than E4 P3. It's important that you don't have the Relentless perk because it will break the rotation. I then have one more perk that's unique to this setup. I know in my Hellware video I promised it would be exactly the same, but I've taken off Absorative and put on Energizing 4 Invigorating 2. It's about a 1 in 4 chance at level 120 invention with an extreme potion. You'll put an imbued component in the middle and then surround it by 8 enhancing components. 
You won't use it for every single loadout, but basically it allows us to get extra adrenaline from the slice ability, which makes it possible to consistently use threshold abilities in one of our rotations. For relics, we'll use Fear of the Smalls, Conservation of Energy, and Persistent Rage, just your standard adrenaline gaining relics. In my inventory, I have Potion Reservoirs and Elder Overload Salves. Next, I have Alloyed Abyssal Armor Spikes for some extra damage. Then I have Penance Powder, an Elven Ritual Shard, and a few Restores. Only one of the loadouts we have has Perfect Prayer Sustain, so you will need to sip a dose of Restore and use the Elven Ritual Shard about once every 6 or so minutes to keep your prayer up. Optionally, you can use a Black Crystal of Melee Weakness to take more damage to get extra Prayer Restore from Penance Powder, but this may kill you on very rare occasions depending on the setup. Besides that, I have a Ripper Demon for some of our methods, and then drop placeholders. The first setup I have is the overall most consistent one, where you should be able to AFK for a full hour without issue. You might need to tweak the rotation slightly if you're killing Vindicta too fast, and you may need to move back into place once an hour if you get a particularly slow kill, but that's a very rare occurrence. The action bar we'll use is Punish, Berserk, Assault, Havoc, Greater Fury, Dismember, Overpower, Greater Flurry, Destroy, and Sever. If you're unable to kill the boss fast enough, you can reposition the thresholds as Destroy first, then Assault, and then Greater Flurry, but this rotation is a risk if you kill the boss too fast and may occasionally give you smoke at the start of the fight. We'll use a Ripper Demon as our familiar. It is possible to use a legendary pet if you use the destroy first bar, but you'll die occasionally with it, so I have another method that I'll go over a little bit later instead that works better with that legendary pet. We won't activate our book of full with this rotation. If you do, you'll end up killing Benicta too fast sometimes, which will break the AFK and kill you. For our prayers, we'll use malevolence and soul split. We'll kill the boss on fastest respawn speed, when you enter the instance run to this spot exactly, it ensures that Vindicta attacks you right away and doesn't move your character when swapping to the Dragon Rider form. In low graphics, the spot is one tile west of the lighter colored cross. You can move around a bit until you find the right area. Prayer Sustain is not 100% with this method, so you'll need to use your Crystal and Super Restore every 5 minutes or so. This shouldn't be too bad, assuming you come back to area loot drops because we do have that Ripper Demon out. If you'd rather not loot drops, you can use a legendary pet with the Equilibrium Aura. You'll use Soul Split and Malevolence as your prayers and an active full book. The bar is Dismember, Berserk, Punish, Greater Fury, Destroy, Havoc, Overpower, Assault, Greater Flurry, and Tusk of Wrath. With this setup, you should be okay to use a Black Crystal for extra prayer sustain. You will occasionally have a too slow kill, causing your character to run away from that initial spot we're standing on, but simply running back into place when that happens is enough to fix that issue. You'll also probably be fine for a couple of kills if that happens, but eventually it will catch up to you. Again, prayer sustain isn't perfect for this method, although it's pretty good, so you may need to use an Elven Ritual Shard and a Sip of Restore every now and again. If you are looking for just perfect prayer sustain so you don't need to think about that part, I have another method that works for continuous prayer. For this method, we'll go back to using a Ripper Demon. We will activate our Book of Full, and we're not going to take a Dark Crystal. The aura we'll use is the Penance Aura, but you can also use DPS auras like Berserker or Majra to push over 60 kills per hour. This is the rotation that takes advantage of the Energizing 4 perk to ensure we can use all of our threshold attacks. The bar is Punish, Berserk, Havoc, Destroy, Greater Fury, Dismember, Overpower, Greater Flurry, Assault, Slice, and Chaos Roar. This is the only bar I've included Chaos War with, but it won't activate most kills, so won't throw off your rotation. For 100% prayer sustain, you may need to combine Powder of Penance with the Penance Aura. You will occasionally get kills under 30.6 seconds, but this bar is designed to work around that, so the next kill won't be affected. The one risk is kills where you retaliate one tick later than usual after a 30 second or faster kill. If that happens, the hit points threshold for the smoke attack will process right before you do enough damage to skip it, so a smoke line will go down. All you need to do is step to the side and you can avoid that attack. 
If you're using a DPS aura, then you'll want to babysit this a little bit because it's about 50-50 if the smoke will trigger. With penance, it's a lot less common, so you can go more AFK. That's the end of the melee bars. Hopefully these methods at least have inspired you. Uh, just a quick bonus here, there's a reflect bar that I was using with darkness and the vampirism aura and scrimshaw with protect melee on. If you don't quite meet the gear requirements for this method so you can't skip the smoke consistently, you can try out this reflect bar to get something that works better for you. Also, here's the PVME recommended necromancy rotation and gear if you want to go that path instead.